The human behavior is more influenced by the things outside of us than inside. People can easily turn good or evil based on their situation. There are hardly no exceptions for this. Among many experiments in this, the 1971 Stanford Prison Experiment has long been considered a window into the horrors ordinary people can inflict on one another. But new interviews with participants and reconsideration of archival records shed more light on the findings. Keep watching to know all about the 1971 Stanford Prison Experiment. The Stanford Prison Experiment SPE, was a social psychological experiment that attempted to investigate the psychological effects of perceived power, focusing on the struggle between prisoners and officers. It was conducted at Stanford University on the days of August 14 to 20, 1971 by a research group led by psychology professor Philip Zimbardo using college students. In the study, volunteers were assigned to be either guards or prisoners by the flip of a coin, in a mock prison with Zimbardo himself serving as the superintendent. Several prisoners left mid-experiment and the whole experiment was abandoned after six days. Early reports on experimental results claimed that students quickly embraced their assigned roles. With some guards enforcing authoritarian measures and ultimately subjecting some prisoners to psychological torture. While many prisoners passively accepted psychological abuse and by the officer's request actively harassed other prisoners who tried to stop it. The experiment has been described in many introductory social psychology textbooks, although some have chosen to exclude it because its methodology is sometimes questioned. The US Office of Naval Research funded the experiment as an investigation into the causes of difficulties between guards and prisons in the United States Navy and United States Marine Corps. Certain portions of it were filmed and excerpts of footage are publicly available. Some of the experiment's findings have been called into question and the experiment has been criticized for unscientific methodology and possible fraud. Whereas, the experiment purported to show the prison guards instinctively embraced sadistic and authoritarian personalities. Zimbardo actually instructed the guards to exert psychological control over the prisoners. Critics also noted that some of the participants behaved in a way that would help the study. So that, as one but later put it, the researchers would have something to work with, which is known as demand characteristics. Variants of the experiments have been performed by other researchers, but none of them have replicated the results of the SPE. The archived official website of the Stanford Prison Experiment describes these as the experiment goal. We wanted to see what the psychological effects were of becoming a prisoner or prison guard. To do this, we decided to set up a simulated prison and then carefully note the effects of this institution on the behavior of all those within the walls. A 1997 article from the Stanford News Service described experiment goals in a more detailed way. Zimbardo's primary reason for conducting the experiment was to focus on the power of roles, rules, symbols, group identity and situational validation of behavior that generally would repress ordinary individuals. I had been conducting research for some years on de-individuation, vandalism and dehumanization that illustrated the ease with which ordinary people led to engage in antisocial acts by putting them in situations where they felt anonymous or they could perceive of others in ways that made them less than human, as enemies or objects. Zimbardo told the Toronto Symposium in the summer of 1996. Male participants were recruited and told that they would participate in a two-week prison simulation. 
The team selected the 24 participants whose test results predicted that they would be the most psychological stable and healthy. These participants were predominantly white and of the middle class. The group was intentionally selected to exclude those with criminal backgrounds, psychological impairments and medical problems. They all agreed to participate in a 7 to 14 day period and received $15 per day. After a relatively uneventful first day, on the second day the prisoners in cell 1 blockaded their cell door with their beds and took off their stocking caps, refusing to come out or to follow the guards instructions. Guards from other ships volunteered to work extra hard to assist in subduing the revolt. and subsequently attacked the prisoners with fire extinguishers without being supervised by the research staff finding that handling nine cellmates with only three guards per shift was challenging one of the guards suggested that they use a psychological tactics to control them they set up a privilege cell in which prisoners who were not involved in the riot were treated with special rewards such as higher quality meals The, the privileged inmates chose not to eat the meal in commiseration with their fellow prisoners. After only 35 hours, one prisoner began to act crazy, as Zimbardo described. Number 8612 then began to act crazy. To scream, to curse, to go into a rage that seemed out of control. It took quite a while before we became convinced that he was really suffering and that we had to release him. Guards forced the prisoners to repeat their assigned numbers to reinforce the idea that this was their new identity. Guards soon used their prisoner counts to harass the prisoners. Using physical punishment such as protracted exercise for errors in the prison count. Sanitary conditions declined rapidly. exacerbated by the guards refusal to allow some prisoners to urinate or defecate anywhere but in a bucket placed in their cell as punishment the guards would not let the prisoners empty the sanitation bucket mattresses were a valued item in the prison so the guards would punish the prisoners by removing their mattresses leaving them to sleep on concrete some prisoners were forced to be naked as a method of degradation Several guards became increasingly cruel as the experiment continued. Experimenters reported that approximately one third of the guards exhibited genuine sadistic tendencies. Most of the guards were upset when the experiment was halted after only six days. Zimbardo argued that the prisoners had internalized their roles. Since some had stated they would still accept parole even if they would mean fortifying their pay. Despite the fact that quitting would have achieved the same result without the delay involved in waiting for their parole requests to be granted or denied, Zimbardo argued that they had no reason for continued participation in the experiment after having lost all monetary compensation. Yet they did because they had internalized the prisoner identity. Prisoner number 416, a newly admitted standby prisoner, expressed concern about the treatment of the other prisoners. The guards responded with more abuse. When he refused to eat his sausages, saying he was on a hunger strike, guards confined him to solitary confinement, a dark closet. The guards then instructed the other prisoners to repeatedly punch on the door while shouting at 416. The guard said he would be released from solitary confinement only if the prisoners gave up their blankets and slept on their bare mattresses which all but one refused to do. Zimbardo aborted the experiment early when Christina Marshall, a graduate student in psychology whom he was dating and married later, objected to the conditions of the prison after she was introduced to the experiment to conduct interviews. Zimbardo noted that of more than 50 people who had observed the experiment, Marshall was the only one who questioned its morality. After only 6 days of a planned 2 weeks duration, the experiment was discontinued.
On August 20, 1971, Zimbardo announced the end of the experiment to the participants. According to Zimbardo and his colleagues, the Stanford Prison Experiment demonstrates the powerful role that the situation can play in human behavior. Because the gods were placed in a position of power, they began to behave in ways they would not usually act in their everyday lives or other sins. The prisoners placed in a situation where they had no real control became passive and depressed. Only a few people were able to resist the situational temptations to yield the power and dominance, while maintaining some resemblance of morality and decency. Obviously, I was not among the noble class, Zimbardo later wrote in his book, The Lucifer Effect. Despite some of the criticism, the Stanford Prison Experiment remains an important study in our understanding of how the situation can influence human behavior.